Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective, the case of the failing feed water pumps. I met the owner of an apartment building at one of my steam seminars, and he stayed after to ask a question. How long are boiler feed pumps supposed to last? He asked. About 15 years, according to ASHRAE. Why? We've gone through five of them in the past five years, he informed me, and showed me a picture of one. I knew this pump cost almost $2,000. My next question was whether the system used water treatment, and he informed me they did. I offered to stop by and look at the system later in the week, and he thanked me. When I arrived, I saw four boxes with a defective pump in each. About $8,000 worth of merchandise was in the boxes at my feet. The owner said that another failed, and he would replace it making it six pumps within five years. By asking questions, I discovered the failures seemed to occur at the start of the heating season or after an extended period of warm weather when the boilers were off. I read his water treatment reports and found the readings to be in the proper ranges. Then I checked the temperature of the condensate. If the condensate temperature is too warm, it could flash the steam inside the pump. This could ruin the pump impeller. Elevated condensate temperatures are usually the result of leaking steam traps and appear visually as steam coming from the condensate return tank vent or overflow pipe. The condensate temperature was 205 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature seemed about right as the boilers were set for 2 PSI steam. This made the steam temperature about 222 degrees Fahrenheit. On a properly operating steam system, the condensate temperature should be between 15 and 20 degrees lower than the steam temperature, and this met that criteria. Next, I placed one of the defective feed water pumps on the workbench. I removed the pump impeller from the housing and looked inside. I first looked at the pump impeller. If the pump cavitated or flashed the steam inside, the impeller would show some pock marks or damage. This one didn't. The rust and dirt inside the volute and on the impeller did catch my attention. The owner removed the defective pump and I looked inside the tank. The tank was filled with dirt and mud. Looking at the condensate return pipe, I saw there was no strainer on the pipe. The tank's mud, rust, and dirt were sucked into the pump, prematurely destroying it. When the boiler feed pump was off for an extended time, that mud would harden and it was almost like cement inside it. My suggestion was to clean the inside of the tank entirely and install a strainer in the condensate return, which would stop some of the system junk from collecting in the bottom of the tank and being sucked into the pump. I also suggested he blow down the tank once a year to get rid of the dirt and the mud. I saw the owner a few years later at a trade association meeting, and he told me that he hadn't had to replace a pump since I was there. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com has my monthly blog post on steam systems for breweries, and Fire Ice Heat is my company website. I have written 11 books on boilers, and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you can find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I hope to see you on the next case.